I'm Stephanie Wong from the Google campus in Sunnyvale, and we're talking baseball. Today we're trying to figure out what makes players popular with fans in Major League Baseball and how you can use machine learning to predict it. And joining me, MJ Jacob, cloud engineer from New York City, and Dale Markowitz, applied AI engineer here at Google. Hey guys. Hey Steph. Okay, so first of all, are you both baseball fans at all? I'm a baseball fan, but I'm really a data nerd. So I think being a data nerd makes you kind of be a baseball fan because there's just so much to analyze. It's like being in a candy store. What about you, MJ? Uh, yeah, I would say I have a pretty healthy relationship with baseball for two reasons. Number one, when I was a kid growing up, uh, I used to play home run derby all the time, and nothing's like just knocking some pitches out of the park. Uh, and number two, I love going to in-person baseball games, like being able to eat a hot dog with your drink, with your friends, with your sunglasses on. It's a beautiful show. So let's get to our lineup. We have some amazing guests today. We have Josh Frost, Vice President of Product at Major League Baseball. And you... Kevin Euculus, a three-time MLB All-Star, a player who was incredibly popular for reasons that weren't obvious unless you were a data nerd. All right, so you guys, what do you think are the types of data sets that would help determine a really popular player online? Number one, I'd love to collect data from TikTok Lots of trends coming out of TikTok, of course. Number two, the most popular songs that are currently trending. And then number three, the most popular dances. And the reason for this is think about back in the day when John Wall was trending, right? Everyone was like, do the John Wall, do the John Wall. It was crazy because while he was an awesome basketball player, I think a lot more people knew him and he was a lot more popular because of that dance and that song that came out. Dale, what about you? Can you fill the rest of the I columns I want all for me? social media, TikTok stuff that you want too, but I also want some more boring things like maybe how is popularity measured and like what sort of users are more likely to submit answers, like what is their ages, what device type. So all of the unsexy stuff that actually can make a big difference in the end. What do you think, Stephanie? Yeah, I think there are a couple in between things for fun and boring, I guess. It's TikTok dances, because obviously those are a big driver for what's trending these days. Or does a player have a orange or red beard like Justin Turner? So there are a ton of things that you can look at and even social justice issues, like if they've been really active about those things in the past. Yeah, and I think that's super important that last point you just touched on, Steph, because at the end of the day, I love when players can use their platform to make a difference in the world. And when they become popular because of that, I think that's an incredible uh, two birds, one stone. Exactly. It's hard to put that into a column, but it'd be neat. Joining us now is Josh Frost with a little bit more about how to define an all-star baseball player and to talk about an exciting challenge for data scientists who love the game. Hey, how's it going? Okay, so Josh, we know that there is an exciting new Kaggle competition and MLB. Can you tell us a little bit more about the details of it? Yeah, it's a really exciting one because it's uh, pretty different, we feel, from what's been done before in the Kaggle space and certainly in our world. Uh, effectively, we're trying to ask uh, AI and ML enthusiasts to try and predict uh, what makes a popular player. So digital engagement is really how we measure that. And we're giving uh, pretty rich data sets to challenge people to say, um, can you divine some signal? Can you create an algorithm to help predict player popularity? And we have uh, really rich data sets there, lots of documentation on kind of you know, what the information is, but ultimately we think it's a really unique opportunity for you to you know, try the, your skill sets at making a prediction at a business problem that we think about every day and that lots of uh, sports and media companies alike uh, are thinking about every day as well. Mm -hmm. won't even see this one. <laughs> wow. All right, so Josh, I got to know, what makes an all-star player in your opinion? So I think the question that's really interesting is what makes someone beloved by the fans, right? Not just for 
know, the what you do on the field, it's very creative, but staying after to sign autograph, creating a cool video, collabing with local artists, all those things are really strong signals that help define the, the modern all-star. So Josh, talking about players that are beloved, I got to tell you, so I'm an applied AI engineer here at Google, and I'm sort of like a big fangirl actually for what you do and what the MLB does with data. I mean, we're going to enter into this Kaggle competition, like what sort of data are we going to have to work with? Yeah, we, we think it's really unique because it's, you know, not just an entertainment product, it's a performance product as well. It's really a business, of course, you're getting these really unique data sets combining the differences between on-field performance, kind of the business metrics of, you know, how fans interact in the digital space, uh, both on our uh, core platforms and even on social as well. So you'll get some pretty distinct data sets there. And then, you know, what we call our stats API says this huge range of information uh, that allows you to marry it up with something that you really wouldn't think about. So, you know, something that we've found a lot of interest in looking at already is, when you see spikes for someone on either their player page views or on their social follows, like did that correlate with anything that happened on the field? Is there anything that you've learned using all this now combined data that was very surprising that you didn't expect? Yeah, I think, you know, I'm always surprised and impressed how uh, nationality and kind of like country of origin can be a really strong influence. So when Shohei Otani plays, there's going to be strong correlations, um, you know, really throughout Asia. Uh, but there are also other kind of like less well-known correlations on, you know, when this player comes and plays at the stadium, he over-indexes. Why? Maybe he's from that town. Maybe he's from that, uh, from that area or played college ball there. So being from San Francisco myself, I totally agree that an origin is a huge uh, part of the whole equation for me. But who would you vote for in this case? Well, I'm super biased. I'm from Chicago or outside of Chicago, so I'm always going to vote for the Cubs. Uh, but this year, I think I have a pretty good case. Uh, you know, recently, Javi Baez has this incredible play. He's called El Mago, which means the magician in Spanish. And he can literally create something out of nothing. And he is a, a top performer, so I'll definitely be voting for him. But he's also a top performer because he's so dynamic and, you know, having swag. Yep kind of impossible to define, but also definitely noticeable as well. Or could popularity be based off the shoes or the bling that they're wearing? We were joking that I would love to create a metric for the swag chain that Fernando Tatis Jr. wears, that like every time he makes this mind-blowing grand slam, um, you know, he's putting this very cool, uh, kind of hilarious big gold chain on. Like no data can measure that, but like plenty of data could measure how people react and feel about it, right? As we learn about the more subtle things that make players really valuable, are, are fans understanding that? Are they, are they understanding when a player is valuable, even if it's not in a, a swag way? Yeah, that's what I love about kind of this era of baseball is that there's never been a deeper appreciation from a fan or a front office perspective for uh, on-field performance, right? So it's really fun and exciting to talk about kind of, you know, swag and all, all those other topics. Yeah, I've, I've always believed that all players have a data story, mostly because uh, that helps track the way that they've evolved from someone who was playing Little League all the way to being a major leaguer, right? And the data story uh, can be, you know, in how a scout discovered them. It could be an anomaly or a pattern. Uh, Kevin Euclid is a famous example, uh, commonly referred to as the Greek god of walks, where uh, he was noticed uh, because he was excellent at getting on base. Uh, through walks. Ball four. Something else that you've seen in you know, the last couple seasons is that we're using not just data, but video as well. We have consumer data, on field data, we have business data and industry data. Now, machine learning and AI is giving us these opportunities to start uh, gleaning insights uh, across all of these different data sets. Thank you so much for joining today, and we hope that we get to see you on the field out there someday. Yeah, can't wait. Do you think you can have an impact on America's pastime? Maybe you can. Join the MLB Player Digital Engagement Forecasting Competition. The competition will dive deeper into the player fandom of America's pastime. The result? The ability to predict the most popular players for MLB. And yo, you can win $50,000 in prize money.
Josh mentioned three-time MLB All-Star player Kevin Euclid, and we just happen to have Kevin Euclid here on the show with us today. Kevin, you, you, let's get it. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> morning. Thank you so much for being here. I have to ask first off, what is it like being known as the Greek god of walks? And do you think that's why you were so popular? Oh, the Greek god of walks. Well, this is something that's been a, a part of my life since I was in, uh, wow, double A baseball around 2003. Uh, I got dubbed this by the book Moneyball. And uh, it's funny because I'm not Greek, but uh, I'm of Romanian descent of my father's side with the Euclid name. So it was a name change. But the Greek community still loves me to this day. So uh, and I love I love the Greek culture and uh, a lot of the food. So it, it's I still consider myself Greek in some ways. Yeah, it was one of those times where it was wild. Uh, I got a lot of recognition in the minor leagues. I never had recognition ever in my life, um, you know, a little bit here and there. Uh, but I was kind of an underdog. So do you think that life would have been different if you were there while big data, before big data became a real th big thing? It's funny, like, uh, so w when analytics started coming about in the early years, uh, a lot of it was just back behind the scenes. As baseball players, we just went out there every day, we practiced, we worked hard. So analytics became a big deal, uh, probably, yeah, right around the time when I got drafted, um, it, it started to become more of the norm of learning about on-base percentage, understanding that the, the key to, you know, baseball is getting on base. Uh, whether, you know, on-base percentage is also a part of getting hits. So, you know, average was a big deal for a long time, but the on-base percentage included walks, hit by pitches, and it became a focal point. The data and analytics is really good for the coaching. Uh, there's a lot of good information that is quick and easy, um, whereas before you'd have to have different video angles of the hitters, trying to assess and see what kind of body movements they have. Now we have the ability to assess those body movements. So when a player is, is in a funk or doing something, maybe there's something little that we can take out of it. So Kevin, on that point, I'm curious, when you watch the video and you assess the data, how frequent is it that the data actually is accurate with what you're seeing in the video? We talk about this all the time is, uh, Players make the analytics, and then the analytics are evaluated by other people that are very smart and intelligent and understand how to break it down. So that, that's one of the funny parts about it. And, you know, the video, the video doesn't lie a lot of times. I'm sure some, some players must be more connected with the data than others. They have like a data head. Yes, there are some players that are very, very into the data. Uh, there's other players that don't want any data. There's a lot of analytics and like driven into the pitching side because you're really on offense. You're in control of throwing the ball. It's like golf, the ball's sitting right there. And that's why it's become super big analytic driven because you control what you're doing. As a hitter, you're actually on defense. You're reacting to what they're doing. <laughs> now, you were a rookie on the Boston Red Sox when y'all vanquished the curse of the Bambino. Do you really think data had anything to do with that? Front office used data to, for, to, to get the team, right? So you plug and play players. I mean, Theo Epstein has done a, a great job of that over the years, is building a lineup and trying to figure out what kind of players you want. And I think he did that in a lot of ways. He saw value in certain players. And yeah, so like we got a David Ortiz from the Minnesota Twins that – you know, the, the, it, it was a major league player, but they just didn't see him because they had other players that they thought were more valuable. Wow. So the data helped get the players on the team. But once the players were on the team, that's where the full human kicked in. And let's feel, let's practice, let's get better day by day. No data a part of that. Once you get to a certain level, pretty much everyone's on a playing field. Um, some are greater athletes than others physically, but it's the mind and how you slow down. And there's not a lot of analytics for that. A good coach understands the player and how they can handle certain analytics. And if you, if you understand the player first, then you can introduce the thing slowly into um, the player's mind in order to make them better every day. Thank you so much for your time today, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. Go Sox. Go Sox. You. you. Kevin, you.
So now let's talk about the Kaggle Challenge with Major League Baseball. It's the MLB Player Digital Engagement Forecasting Competition. The competition will dive deeper into the player fandom of America's pastime. Don't forget, there are $50,000 in prizes and of course, serious bragging rights up for grabs. Hope you're feeling inspired at home. Remember, you can try Vertex AI for free in the Google Cloud Console and visit the companion assets to build what you've seen here today. That's all for today. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Dale. Bye, MJ. Two stuff. Peace from NYC. You, you. <laughs> <laughs>